So, I am personally excited about this one only because there is a backstory in terms of manifestation and I've always said seeing you perform it was somewhere at Soho I, I can't remember the club do you, do you have any uh, ideas hmm, I can't think of it now but Say, yeah you just performed so many places <laughs> right, as like, you said Soho I was like which one is it going to be? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, boy. All I know is we're in the queue and when you get into the doors, there's two sets of doors, you turn left and go downstairs, and turn right, and then the bar is at the left and you was performing at the right. Does that help? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll just like, cut to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally that bow. Yeah. Oh, we might be on part two, who knows. But yeah, just explain uh, who you are. I'm Batman. Yeah, so um, I'm Anton Joseph. I'm a music producer and a DJ, as well as a songwriter. So yeah. Sick. Oh, so you songwrite too. Yeah. Hey. Want to listen to some tunes? Um, but what I wanted to ask you was, I didn't know you sung right. So out of the three things you do, which one first brings more income? Huh. Um, tell them to bring me my money. DJ, because I feel like it's more of a service. Like with songwriting, for example, mm -hmm. you're only going to get anything if, if doing a song that does well or you pitch the song to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Uh, same with production, but with DJ, with DJ, because it's just a straight service. It's like you DJ, you get paid. Okay. The new people, uh, how do they avoid being scammed or bumped as we call it? Well, I mean, I feel like that's a bit. I'm gonna ask a couple other questions before answering that properly. Yeah. But like, do you mean in it paying DJs too much, or do you mean? as a DJ working for free or what route do you mean by scam? Good question. Good question. You're literally the first person who has asked Ink Studio Blue a question. Like this is history of the interviews. <laughs> this is a certified hood classic. So we're gonna have to edit something here where it's like number one of history, Guinness or Ink Studio Blue. You know, I agree with anyone getting paid as much money as possible because there's enough money around the world. Mm. And I believe everyone is as talented, so they deserve what they are pricing the talent as. However, I've been in situations, not saying all clubs, not saying the music industry is, you know, all messed up, where certain DJs have performed and not been paid and nothing's been sorted or they did get the money in advance or you know they're newbies to the game hmm. so for example like when he first started because most of my stuff were raised in the southeast in terms of like that situation how did they avoid being bumped i mean like legally if you've got something of that in writing you can always go to like small claims court and chase that up got you but it's more of the hassle of doing it. It's in like, uh, there are companies, if you go to uh, help musicians, for example, it's like a charity that's designed to like help musicians with a various, like a myriad of different things. But one of the things is like legal, the legal side of uh, music. To answer your question to what, how to not get scammed, I'd say like, read up and look at it. And if it sounds shady, it probably is. Okay. Thank you for that because there's a lot of scams going on, especially in the past three years. Scams will always go on, don't get me wrong, but remember, as nice as we try and make the vibes with Ink Studio Blue, there is a lot of pandemics and wars and inflation. I heard it's gone up by 7%. So there's a lot going on in the world. Um, however, we digress. So in terms of all of this madness going on in the world, how have you manage to stay at the top tier of this DJ industry or music industry? Um, I'd say like when it comes to things like this, there's always like shifting stuff. So there's so many DJs that have blown up now mm. that have only started during the pandemic, but use TikTok in a way that was uh, in, like, that was unique to their brand, that right. pushed them bigger than established DJs right. and they're getting a uh, bigger spot, I would say, they're known more. So I feel like for me, of recently, it's, it's definitely been trying to like, learn how to adapt to becoming a uh, an online presence 
instead of just a DJ. It, it doesn't mean you can't get the same gigs, but it, it's literally like um, people people, if people will book you for things that will raise your profile more. That's right. Than just getting gigs and like. How should someone start DJing? Like, how did they even? Did they buy decks? Did they go on YouTube? Like, how did they start? I feel like the technical skill of being a DJ yeah. is something that's pretty straightforward in the way of you can learn what all of the buttons do. Okay. You can learn how to beat match. You can learn how to scratch mix, right? I am really going to enjoy this. Mm. And it's, it's, it's a skill, as in if you practice it every day, if you spend like two or three hours a day doing that, mm. you're going to get good at that. Because your muscle memory and things like that, right? 100%. But the main part of, the, of being a DJ is the psychology aspect of that, as in knowing what to play in a space to a group of people. I would say if you want to be a DJ in that space, do learn how to do the basics. That's a great idea. And like master that, whether that's buying decks. If you don't want to buy decks, you can always go to a place like Roundhouse, which is in Campbell. Oh, yeah. And you can like rent, uh, if you're like under 25, it'll be like a pound for an hour, right? Don't tell me money's in the way. You heard that two pound can't even get you chicken and chips and a drink anymore. And apple pie is just not happening anymore. So please, if you're willing to sacrifice chicken and chips to benefit your career, not necessarily just for money, Please, please, please invest in yourself. Do it! Just do it! So I had to digress there because everything you're given is what we call gems. And so we had an interview earlier today. We love that person to be in the courses. Um, and it's just looking like we want everyone who's done an interview today to be in that course. However, when we first started, I'm going to mention this again, we had one follower and so you were someone we wanted to have as a course um are you willing to do this uh i mean like definitely would need to hear more about it sounds interesting though. yeah it's a cool, cool uh idea I'd, I'd like to hear more all right can we make some noise please <laughs> that wasn't a set yes for me but it sounded like a good 60 70 percent so i'll bring the 30 percent home in due time because i know you're busy man <laughs> Is there a new person that's coming out, like? Or... Yeah, so it's a uh, it's a series. It's every week, right? It's every week uh, on Wednesday, midday. Uh, cool. It's a new mix. Mainly, it's in the disco house uh, atmosphere. Any South African house? Uh, at the moment, uh, no. But that probably will be in future. Ah, cool. Just because it's what I try to do with the series is for the first. 10 episodes. Yeah. Uh, I picked, oh shit, the uh, Michaels. My drop. I appreciate you for this. I have dug deeper than usual only because you are the king, so there is more to learn. And a lot of our followers now are becoming uh, producers, DJs of that sort. So I really wanted to dig deeper. Um, and I appreciate you for the transparency, the truth, and just letting you know how we can find you. Um, so we'll leave it as this. Hopefully you do join us. I might get some of our true fans to maybe message you and say, please, it would give you a bit of incentive to say yes, but I know you are a busy man. So I appreciate you being here. Can we have a round of applause for Andrew? <laughs>